Oh. Oh my I God, can't... have I been taking astral trips? No, just a <laughs> Facebook post, that's all. <laughs> all right, good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock and I am Andrea Tantillo. And before we get started, I want to go over a few little housekeeping items. Um, Wendy, okay. First, I wanna let you know that this meeting is being recorded. All microphones should be muted throughout the presentations. And we ask that if you're not presenting to consider turning your camera off. And with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to HGAC Board of Directors Chair and Wharton County Judge, the Honorable Philip Spinrad. Good morning. Well, I guess it's my welcome time. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And, and this is such a great um, event and celebration. I, a few years ago, uh, one of our cities, the, uh, East Bernard, won a, an award for uh, creation of and planning of their wonderful city park. And, and you know, in this day and age, uh, we're, we're growing. Texas is becoming more populated. And we can never lose sight of um, the needs of, of our people and, and the extracurricular activities that, that we need to provide. Um, sometimes you ride around in the cities or, and even in small towns and you see areas uh, that have become kind of blighted and people have kind of forgotten about them. I know as a county judge, one of, of our biggest responsibilities, kind of like mayors and, and even school board members is, uh, you know, we, we want to have a place for our kids to come back and raise their families. I, I have five boys and, and uh, I always tell them, I want you to come back home when you get married. Uh, now, I don't necessarily want you to move back into the home that I'm at, uh, but I want you to be nearby. And, and our kids today uh, require a lot of different things than, than we originally needed. Uh, number one, we've got to create some jobs for them. And a lot of times when you talk at, at companies that are looking to, to move to our area, one of the things they look at is quality of life for their employees. That's a big thing that, that we all have to take into consideration, especially in this day where, where meetings now are virtual or Zoom and such. Uh, if you're going to attract someone to your area, attract new business, new opportunities to your area, you've got to make sure uh, that, that there's a place for the people and their families, good schools and, and playgrounds and parks and walking trails. And so today, uh, the Houston Galveston Area Council is recognizing two groups of awards. Uh, one has been around for a while, I believe 2006. It's the Parks and Natural Areas Awards. And then the other one, uh, it deals with uh, water improvements, water quality, which is also very important. And, and HJC has been giving these awards the last three years. Well, why do you recognize uh, someone that's doing this? Because I'm kind of a, a move dirt guy. I, I really am not big into planning. Uh, a lot of times plans, you spend a lot of money and they, they stay on the shelf. And, and I want to push some dirt around and get things done. But I do recognize before you can ever get a project going, you got to get some buy-in. You've got to explain to the public, you got to explain to the other leaders what you're planning to do. And because of course, everything's going to require a little money. And so we, we have to recognize, and HJC does outstandingly at is, is recognizing the planning process uh, because uh, without a good plan, you're in trouble, but then the implementation of the projects. And so today we're going to hear uh, about some the, some of the best of the best, not only ideas, but actually um, implementing the plans. Uh, you know, and looking back at some of the winners, uh, we've had big projects uh, that, that dealt with uh, flooding uh, mitigation. We've had projects that dealt with uh, be uh, beach sand erosion. And then we've had miles and miles of walking trails and biking trails. So it's a wide array of of the possible uh, projects that, that qualified for this awards, uh, but, but it's just very, very exciting. And so uh, I, I look forward to hearing about the projects. Uh, I, I, man, way to go, keep it going. You know, you're, you're turning in a blighted areas or challenged areas into something that, that's really, really great. And so uh, I, I'm just thankful to be here today and, and I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff Table. And Man, thank you everybody for your plans, your ideas, your implementation, your foresight, your hindsight, your vision. So with that, I, uh, Jeff, it's all yours. Judge, thank you so much for that rousing welcome. I, I think you've reminded us all uh, really why parks and natural areas and, and water quality are, are key, uh, not, not just for the purpose of green, but for really making our region a, a great place to live that uh, 
people are going to want to come to and come back to and, and uh, make their roots here. And uh, we appreciate your ongoing support of this program and are looking forward to your leadership this year. So uh, thank you very much. It is my great privilege to uh, help uh, present these awards for the 15th year. Uh, I can say without qualification that uh, this is one of my favorite days of each year because as the judge said, uh, we are really talking about some phenomenal innovation, creativity, perseverance, uh, whether the project is big or small, uh, whether it's planning or on the ground, as the judge puts it, moving dirt, uh, we, we feel like we've got great examples. And, and one of the things we had really wanted to do when we started this program back in 2006 is we don't need to go somewhere else to learn uh, about great things that are happening. We have so many examples of that right here in our 13 counties. And, and so we hope that this is an opportunity for you to help learn from each other. Today in the Parks Awards section, we're going to be celebrating the achievements of 18 honorees in projects that touch Fort Bend, Galveston, Harris, Liberty, Montgomery, Walker, and Waller counties. And uh, before we get in to recognize the winners, there are a few other special recognitions I would like to make. First and foremost, uh, I would like to thank Glenn Laird, who is the Director of Environmental Services uh, division at the Harris County Flood Control District. Uh, Glenn is the chair of our Parks and Natural Areas Roundtable and has been a long, long-term champion and advocate for this program. And uh, I will turn the podium, as it were, over to Glenn to make a few remarks. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'll keep this uh, as short and sweet as possible uh, so that we can get down to the heart of the matter. Uh, I did want to do sort of a shout out uh, to certain uh, uh, folk who have really made uh, the parks and natural areas, uh, not just the subcommittee as it has been known for so long, but now the round table uh, be successful. And, and first group is, are gonna be all of the people that are regularly attending the round table meetings, uh, whether it was physically or as for the last uh, year, unfortunately, uh, virtually. Uh, and we've actually seen uh, a large growth in the number of people who have become interested enough to attend, to participate, to contribute. Uh, and that makes a world of difference in, in the energy uh, that's uh, moving, uh, continues to move parks and natural areas forward. And the other shout out is gonna have to be to uh, the wonderful HGAC staff that supports uh, the parks and natural areas uh, round table uh, concept and um, its workings uh, on a day to day, month to month, year to year basis and particularly want to single out uh, Andrea Tantalo and Cheryl Murgo, who um, uh, I've been, it's been, it seems like almost 10 years uh, at least that I have been chairing this uh, subcommittee and, and my load in trying to keep the thing rolling has been much lifted by the staff at HCAC in the last few years. And I really appreciate them. And uh, with uh, having said all that, uh, Jeff, it's, um, it's your show. Great. Well, thank you, Glenn, and uh, appreciate your, your service and uh, advocacy for this program and the kind words uh, about the staff. I'd like to take this opportunity now to uh, acknowledge the other people who helped make this year's program possible, and that is our judges. So we'd like to thank uh, Eric Heppen with Harris County Precinct 3, uh, Skip Reeder with Houston One Voice, Christian Rines with the Galveston Bay Estuary Program, Tracy Timpanaro from the Communications and Interstate Municipal Utility District, 
and Rebecca Wright with Keep Santa Fe Beautiful. And uh, we appreciate your time and contributions and uh, insights and perspective in, uh, in uh, evaluating the applications and uh, selecting our, our winners and uh, uh, special recognition projects today. Uh, I'd like to note uh, also, I think uh, one of the advantages, if there are any, of uh, Zoom meetings is uh, we can fit more people into our laptop than uh, we can into our conference room sometimes. So we have uh, 100 people online, give or take right now, which I think is a new record for this ceremony. So uh, yay to all of you. So. Now is the moment that we have all been waiting for. Uh, we're going to begin uh, by recognizing our natural parks and, or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, parks and natural areas honorees in planning and on the ground projects over 500,000 and uh, on the ground projects under 500,000. And the first one I would like to recognize is uh, the Buffalo Bayou Master Plan, Buffalo Bayou East Master Plan. The honoree is the Buffalo Pie Partnership, and uh, accepting on behalf of that project is Jose Solis. Hi, good morning. I'm uh, Jose Solis. I'm the project manager for uh, Buffalo Bayou Partnership. Uh, we started the Buffalo Bayou Partner, uh, excuse me, Buffalo Bayou East Master Plan in 2017, and we uh, launched it in 2019. For those of you that are not familiar with the Buffalo Bayou East, it's essentially the area along Buffalo Bayou from downtown to the ship channel to the Port of, uh, the, uh, Port of Houston Turning Basin. To the north is the uh, Fifth Ward, to the south is the Greater East End. Um, it's a former industrial port, port area of the city. Uh, lar the bayou is largely disconnected from the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, it's a very culturally rich part of the city, but also has faced many challenges and has seen disinvestment in, in recent years. Um, so our master plan really works to essentially retie the community to, to the bayou. Uh, for the project, uh, we had a really great team, so I'd like to really thank them as well. Uh, Michael Van Valkenburg and Associates was the landscape architect. HRNA were economic development advisors. UTIL was addressed architecture, Hewitt Zollers was for uh, transportation planning, and Limnotech was for um, hydrology and you know, studying the water. Uh, we had a huge public engagement strategy as part of the, uh, the plan. We had uh, five big community meetings with over 700 participants, 30 smaller meetings. We had 3,600 social media. Uh, engagements, and we reached over 130,000 people through social media. Um, the real driving force behind the, the plan, we really had four key principles that we really stuck to. Authentic, connected, inclusive, and resilient. Authentic, we wanted to make everything that we did in the uh, Buffalo Bayou East really feel, feel like we, it belonged there. As I mentioned, these are very culturally, culturally rich parts of town with long histories. We really wanted to make sure anything we did felt like it belonged to those communities. A connected, as I mentioned, the bayou is very disconnected from, from the neighborhoods. Um, so we wanted to make connections along the bayou, both east to west and additionally north to south so that we could connect back into the neighborhoods and actually have the neighborhoods north to south connect to each other but we also wanted to make it socially connected so that the, the, the communities really actually started to meeting, you know, to meet one another. Inclusive, we really wanted this to be a place for everyone that it wasn't specifically designed for, you know, one group of people, everybody felt comfortable there. And we, you know, on top of that, make sure that we did things that allowed people to stay in the area. And then obviously after Harvey, resilience became a, a key issue in this part of the city, Flooding as it wasn't as much of an issue as uh, uh, erosion. We had stretches of the bayou that shifted, uh, the bank shifted up to 400, I mean, excuse me, 100 feet. So resilience was a big issue, but we also looked at sort of community resilience. What are the things that we could include that really made communities stronger? 
Um, the plan itself was uh, divided into four key areas. Downtown district uh, was the area, basically a, a gateway from downtown Houston into the bayou so that the, inner, you know, the, the area around the convention center, Minute Maid Park, areas like that had essentially a front door to the bayou. The central hub was the really green space heart with a, a big park for the region. We also are including, which is in you know, a different direction uh, that people might think that we did, we're including an affordable and workforce housing project in their neighborhood development in the area. So that you know, this part of town is really, there are issues of displacement and gentrification. So we wanted to you know, uh, mitigate those issues. Industrial district is, is transforming former industrial sites that we own and showing how they could be, you know, rather than eyesores, really transformed into key destinations. So we own a, uh, an abandoned uh, wastewater treatment plant that'll eventually become a uh, floating water gardens. And we own an old wharf, uh, a, a historic wharf facility that we make, will make into a big uh, arts and entertainment district. And finally, the Eastern Terminus is basically the, the end of the project. It's tying several existing parks uh, together and a uh, space that the Port of Houston owns into a much bigger green space at the far end of the, the, of the project. It also really will become this sort of visual gateway to the Port of Houston. And finally, uh, another, you know, the other big component we have of the project is we uh, developed an extensive uh, trail on and off street bike and uh, pedestrian network 43 miles of, of new and improved bikeways, walkways, sidewalks, things like that, um, that builds on the Houston bike plan and you know, coordination with you know, neighborhood groups and, and a number of other organizations in the area. Um, so that kind of gives the over, overview of the plan. We're actually have moved into implementation. We're starting to work on some of the projects for the, the identified within the, uh, the, the plan. And at this point, we've re received $17 million in grant funding to start uh, a lot of the projects and $22 million in uh, funding for uh, award. We were awarded $22 million uh, for the housing project. So this is a project that's going to take you know, 10, 20, 30 years. It's a huge vision for the area, but we're excited to get moving on it. And we're at, we're, we feel like we're we're really on, you know, have started on, on our way to making it a reality. Thank you. Jose, thank you very much and congratulations. Very inspiring project. Now, next to our honorable mention in the planning and process, the planning process category uh, is the Pasadena Healthy Parks Plan. And the honoree is the city of Pasadena Parks and Recreation uh, Department. I'll, I'll and uh, accepting I'll today forward. will be uh, uh, Jed Aplaca, who is the director of Pasadena Parks and Recreation and the honorable Jeff Wagner, mayor of the city of Pasadena. Jeff, thank you so much. What an honor it is to be recognized at honorable mention. You know, our parks are very important. Matter of fact, I'm in my parks every morning. As you can tell, the tree pollen has really got me. So you have to excuse me for a second. But um, partnerships are so important with the city of Pasadena. And our involvement with the uh, Houston uh, Endowment and Pasadena Vibrant um, Association has made our planning for our parks and even be better what they are. And as we've noticed during the pandemic, our parks are being used all the time, more than ever. And we have crews out there constantly cleaning our parks, making our parks safe, clean. And I think our people of our, of our, of our city realize how much we care for them because we care for our parks. So again, thank you all so much. And again, healthy green space makes any city, any county, any state the best. And I think we're doing a very good job here in Pasadena. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm Jeff Blocka, the <clears throat> Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Pasadena. Um, it, it was a great opportunity to work on this um, Healthy Parks Plan. We, uh, the last master plan done by the City of Pasadena was over 20 years old. And, and so with the, um, with the change in demographics and everything, it was really important to, to revisit that. So through, through generous funding with uh, Houston Endowment, like the mayor mentioned, and, and Pasadena Vibrant Community with MD Anderson, you know, we were able to fund this 
this uh, plan. And we worked with, we had a really great team that helped us out that was uh, uh, Houston Parks Board. So Lisa Griff and her team at Houston Parks Board, uh, Oscar Robinson, uh, Katie Coyne and her team over there, and then Amy Morris and Ernest Cook with Land and Water Associate, Associates. So it was, it was great to, to have such a great team on board. Uh, we had such great um, public engagement on this. I think that was an important key in this, uh, in this healthy parks plan. We got you know, lots of people involved. Um, we had online uh, surveys. We had, this was back before, before the pandemic when we could do events. We did have in-person uh, events where we got uh, input from people while they were out there um, you know, directly, directly being able to interact with our team. Uh, some of the things that has shown is that, you know, we, we have such a great, you know, diversity of, of area, not only from like the industrial areas that we have near north of 225, you know, it goes all the way down to, you know, the bayou along Arm Bayou and that wonderful wilderness along that area, you know, even out to El Hardin Beach. Like that's, if you didn't know, Pasadena has a beach park. Uh, and so we have such a great diversity of parks and, and getting the input from the public and from our team and, and seeing what the potential is for the things that we could do here in Pasadena is really great. And so, you know, we, we're already starting to implement some of the things from the plan. We're looking at uh, creating more trails through the city, uh, increasing the park space and increasing just some of our, our opportunities for the public. So really a great, uh, grateful for the opportunity to, you know, receive this award. And again, thank you so much to the team who who helped us out. I think a lot of them are out there in the in the Zoom crowd, uh, and so we're really grateful that we could work with all of them. So thank you, Mayor Wagner and Jed. Congratulations again. Very exciting and inspirational project. Next, we are going to honor uh, a number of projects uh, that we have uh, selected for special recognition. And the first of these will be Parkland Square. And the honoree is uh, Bridgeland, uh, the Howard Hughes Corporation. And uh, accepting on behalf of this project will be Tricia Brassu and Lisa Davis. Uh, Tricia is a senior project manager at Bridgeland and uh, Lisa is a senior associate with OJB Landscape Architecture. Yes, thank you everyone for the special honor. Um, we are very excited about this project and do thanks to Tricia Brasso Keith um, with Howard Hughes for the opportunity and support this project is a TND community. So the design focuses on creating a walkable community. So we have this linear open green space that you see in front of us that becomes the central open space for the community along a two major axis of the street um, in the core of the community. We also have a park that has a little bit more of an urban feel than the typical neighborhood park. In that park, we have um, all the amenities that you can expect from a city park, including a dog park, outdoor living room, um, playground, and other um, amenities for all different ages. And last but not least, we also focus on the sustainability aspect of the development. So we have rain gardens um, all throughout the communities to capture the um, and the rainwater and make it more sustainable. Thank you. And I think Hi. Just, uh, yeah. um, sorry. Hi, I'm uh, Trisha, Trisha Brasso with Howard Hughes Corporation. Um, to start, I'd like to um, first of all thank Lisa and HGAC uh, for this wonderful event today. Um, before I say a few words on the project, I'd like to give a special shout out to OJB, RJ Mil uh, R sorry, RG Miller, DTJ, and Howard Hughes for turning this vision into reality. Parkland Square has proven itself in this in the velocity of home sales. Homes were purchased immediately. Sorry. 
just off the renderings with no lands and all upon a developer's vision, just solely off renderings. It took 18 months for the completion of landscape at, and, and also Celebration Park. At this time, David Weekly only had about 15 units left to sell. The total lots in this neighborhood were basically 173 and the velocity of home sales averaged about nine per month, which is an amazing pace versus our con conventional um, units. Overall, I would say Howard Hughes views this project as a really good business practice of ULI's triple bottom line, social, economic, and environmental. Thanks. Thank you both and congratulations. Next up is the uh, Parks and Pathways Master Plan and the honoree is the City of Fulshire and accepting on behalf of this project is the Honorable Aaron Groff, Mayor of Fulshire. Mayor Groff. Yeah, thank you. It is my incredible honor to accept this award on behalf of the City of Fulshire and City Council and uh, most importantly, our parks and uh, our parks commission who worked incredibly hard on this project. Uh, as many of you may be aware, we are the fastest growing city in the state of Texas. And this tool has already uh, proved to be invaluable as we work with uh, developers throughout the region um, to ensure that we maintain connectivity through our open spaces, our trail system, our parks, um, recreational spaces. Uh, one of the things our residents love most is the natural environment that has been created in Fulcher and we look to maintain even in the midst of our rapid growth. So we thank you uh, today for this, res uh, this recognition and uh, we look forward to seeing all of these projects implemented. Uh, we invite you to come out. We have miles and miles of pathways and parks for you to come and enjoy. And uh, we're just extremely excited as we continue to move forward. And again, we thank you. Mayor, thank you very much and congratulations. And uh, we'll, we'll take you up on that offer to check out those trails. Next up, we have the strategic conservation plan prepared by the Bayou Land Conservancy. And uh, this is an exciting project for me because uh, it sort of strikes uh, to what we try to do here at HGAC and, and look at uh, larger uh, regional level projects. So accepting uh, on behalf of Bayou Land Conservancy is uh, Ms. Becky Martinez, who is the Bayou Land Conservancy's conservation director. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, even not getting to see you in person, it's still wonderful to kind of be in the room with you. Um, so uh, like they were saying, uh, we are so proud to receive this recognition. Um, at Bayou Land Conservancy, our mission is to preserve land along streams. Um, and we've been doing this for over 20 years, but what we wanted to do was create a plan for the next 20 years. And that came with our strategic conservation plan. Um, we wanted to be able to prioritize uh, land conservation opportunities, you know, as they arose, um, to know, you know, where can we really maximize uh, the benefits that conservation brings us all. Um, so our goals with this plan were to identify and describe the important areas to protect in the watersheds where Bayou Land Conservancy works. Uh, we, we work in the watersheds that feed into Lake Houston. It's a big area. Um, and this work impacts over 5 million people, both those living in the watershed and those downstream of the watershed. So our uh, um, objectives with this work, we collected a lot of data through GIS, and then we had uh, public input through meetings and through online surveys. 
And through analyzing all of that data, we were able to develop a plan um, and some goals for Bayou Land Conservancy on where we could, uh, where our conservation efforts would have the most benefit. Um, I, one thing I was really excited about with this plan is that it identified over 100,000 acres of very high priority, beautiful lands um, that would be wonderful for preservation. Um, it's pretty exciting to have that much out there in such an urban area. Um, it's not as urban as we all think. <laughs> um, but we're very excited about this plan. We've already been putting it into action. Um, and, you know, we look forward to the next 20 years using this plan. Thank you again for the recognition. Um, and I want to thank um, some of the folks that helped us. Holloway Environmental Communications helped us, as did uh, students with Texas A&M Geography Society. Uh, they helped with some of the GIS analysis. So thank you to everyone and um, look forward to the future. Thank you, Becky, and congratulations once again. Next up, uh, we would like to recognize the Sylvan Beach Park Master Plan. Uh, the honoree is Harris County Precinct 2. And uh, accepting for this project, I'm pleased to uh, introduce the Honorable Adrian Garcia, who is a Harris County Commissioner for Precinct 2 and also a member of the HGAC Board of Directors. Commissioner Garcia. Thank you, Jeff. And it is uh, great to be with all of the distinguished guests and congratulations to everybody. But in particular, I wanna thank uh, HGAC for hosting this event and recognizing the incredible work that so many are doing to make sure that uh, the, the amenities that we have in our communities are highlighted and promoted and celebrated. And so first, I'd like to thank the folks who worked so hard on developing this plan uh, over the last year or so. From my team, project manager, Antonio Rosario, and parks director, Chris Sadler. They worked alongside our counterparts at the Harris County Engineering Department, particularly Jenna Ford. I also wanna thank the, the consultants who helped us develop uh, this award-winning plan. And uh, that is Sheila Condon and Mary uh, Killers of Clark Condon Associates. You know, Sylvan Beach is a gem of Precinct 2. It is the only free public beachfront in all of Harris County. And it had uh, some incredible uh, times back in the 70s. And so our goal is to make sure that people don't forget the historical and beautiful structure of the Sylvan Beach Pavilion, but also to make sure that we are highlighting uh, all the things that have happened in years past and make sure that we bring that future back or, or that past back into the future and ensure that its future is brighter than its past was. And so we're excited because even before COVID, you know, the city of, of Laporte used to host uh, their annual Sylvan Beach Day there at the, at the park. They had days of celebrations, including concerts, a lot of activities, festivals, and the like. Our parking lots were always packed and full. And so, uh, you know, uh, folks would be walking to the park and enjoying it. And so it was incredible to see. And as I mentioned, you know, the 70s was a great time uh, for Sylvan Beach, but uh, it's still a very, very loved location. And that's why as a commissioner of Precinct 2, I'm paying a lot of attention uh, to Sylvan Beach and making sure that it is a better destination than it once was. The plan includes revamping the existing pier and boardwalk, uh, creating a band stage for future festivals and beautifying the beachfront and uh, really making it a waterfront destination for the entire region. I wanna make sure that if folks get to visit your communities, uh, that it is because they're looking to get to Sylvan Beach. Now, it will take time uh, to develop uh, and, and see all the things happen that are in the plan. But I'm so proud uh, that my team, along with uh, Harris County Engineering and Clark Condon Associates, uh, who were able to create 
a roadmap. You can't get to a great place if you don't have a good roadmap. And thanks to Clark Condon and all the, all the uh, staff that was involved, we've got that. That roadmap will showcase the beauty of this region uh, to the local community and to visitors for generations to come. So thank you so much for the special recognition. Very proud to accept it on behalf of my team and on behalf of the Laporte community, and most importantly, on behalf of Precinct 2. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Congratulations to you and your entire team. Next up, we have uh, the Groves, and the honoree is Ashlar Development. And uh, accepting on their behalf will be uh, Mr. Jake Burgess with TBG Partners Associates. Hello, and hopefully you all can hear me. Um, but my name is Jake Burgess. I'm with uh, Planner with TBG Partners. Uh, thank you for um, this honor, HJC. Uh, and I'm proud to accept on behalf of Mike Miller and the Ashlar development team. Um, really without their commitment to the vision, uh, the groves we set forth in that first planning charrette, uh, we wouldn't be here right now. So um, really from the first minute we, we sat down to plan in that charrette, uh, we committed to creating a unique community that reaches beyond the norm. Uh, it's clear that from the moment you see the canopy of pines by the rooftops that the groves is really different. Um, even the treatment of the drainage to the community is an opportunity to turn what could have been a typical uh, drainage ditch into a naturalized amenity winding through the heart of the community. Um, thoughtful planning and implementation has ensured that the groves is not just somewhere you go park your car and watch TV. Uh, it's a community that encourages you to walk to your neighborhood park and go watch the birds swooping through the trees. Uh, we are honored uh, to accept this award and look forward to new opportunities to challenge the typical uh, alongside Ashlar development. So thank you again for this honor. Thank you, Jacob, and congratulations. Next up, we have Wilcrest Park. The honoree is the West Chase District and the uh, accepting on their behalf is Kelly Allisworth, uh, West Chase District Management Director. Good morning, thank you. I am honored to accept the recognition on behalf of the West Chase District. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our partners uh, for the Wilcrest Park and that's uh, City of Houston, uh, OJB um, is uh, working on, has created the design for the park um, and uh, the Vice President of Projects, uh, this is West Chase different District staff is uh, Irma Sanchez and Projects Director Louis Julien. Uh, again, I'm Kelly Aylesworth. Um, I'm excited to say that uh, we expect construction to start uh, on in October of 2021 for Wilcrest Park. It is a 3.6 acre um, uh, site currently. Uh, it is adjacent to the Robinson West Chase Public Library. Um, and it will be just adjacent uh, to the Library Loop Trail. Uh, and so this is right off of Wilcrest Drive. Our goals uh, in creating this park are to increase uh, connectivity, mobility, community involvement, um, and then overall health. We will uh, have programs and events throughout the year that will be free to the public, um, which will include uh, fitness classes, um, uh, children's activities, book clubs, on our activity lawn and at the performance venue um, that's at the park. Uh, the park also includes a, a dog park as well as a water zone for children to play. So we are excited about construction commencing in the fall. And again, thank you very much uh, for this honor. Kelly, thank you and congratulations. I'm going to ask you to leave your camera and mic on uh, because we have a second project uh, also being recognized uh, by the West Chase District and that is for Wood Chase Park. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, again, I am I'm honored to accept this award on behalf of uh, the West Chase District. Um, exciting news, we, uh, West Chase, uh, 
Wood Chase Park is actually under construction at this time. Uh, constru construction expected to complete uh, in late fall of 2021. So uh, they are just moving right along with construction at this point. Um, I'd like to thank our partners uh, for this project. Uh, OJB uh, uh, did and created the design. Uh, DL Meacham is our general contractor. And of course, uh, City of Houston is, uh, we appreciate the partnership with City of Houston. Um, the Wood Chase Park is a two acre uh, park site um, and it is located at 3901 Wood Chase Drive. Um, so it's just north of the West Park Tollway um, and uh, it will connect to the Elmside Wood Chase Trail Path, which is currently under construction as well. So we're doing this simultaneously. Um, the park will feature a community garden, uh, also an 8,000 square foot activity lawn, performance venue, um, and uh, many other uh, features um, that will come along with the park. Um, one of the things that um, I would like to mention is that the park will hold uh, program events and activities throughout the year, which will be free to the public. Um, so our goals in mind were to um, increase community involvement um, as well as overall health and give a place for um, the residents and tenants of the area to visit. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, increased mobility through, through the community. One thing I'd like to mention as well is from a sustainability approach, we are currently uh, transplanting uh, 200 gallon high rise live oaks to the park site to give them a better home where they can thrive and flourish. Uh, their existing home um, uh, uh, in the West Chase District um, is a smaller space. And so thus transplanting them to the Wood Chase Park will give them uh, more room to thrive and grow and then provide shade uh, for park visitors. So again, thank you very much. We appreciate the honor. Thank you, Kelly. And uh, thank you and congratulations to all of our honorees today in the planning category. Now we're going to switch uh, to actual on the ground projects. And when we conceived of this program a long time ago, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we, we've got great projects of, of all ranges of sizes and budgets. Uh, so we split it into two categories. And the first category we are going to honor today are for those larger projects that are on the ground over $500,000. And our overall winner in that category is the Clay Family Eastern Glades. The honoree is the Memorial Park Conservancy and accepting on their behalf is Randy Odene, who is the Vice President of Capital Projects and Facilities. Randy? Hi, thank you, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Well, thank you, um, thank you very much. On behalf of Memorial Park Conservancy and our, uh, our partners on the project, the city, um, Parks Department, Uptown Development Authority, um, thank you for the award. Uh, for those who haven't visited yet, Eastern Glades is about a hundred acre space on the east side of Memorial Park in Houston. Uh, it opened last summer and is our first major project from the 2015 master plan. So we've been really happy seeing the community response since opening the project this summer. Uh, so many families coming out in the um, times where everybody's looking for a new place to visit outside and spend time um, uh, in, these, in, in a new open space. We've got two and a half miles of trails around the lake and wetlands um, and within these restored habitats. Um, so thank you again. We're very excited to receive this award and we appreciate the recognition. Thank you, Randy, and congratulations. Thank you. Our honorable mention in this category is the Atascacita Area Park. And the honoree is Harris County Precinct 2. And uh, it is my pleasure to welcome back the Honorable Adrian Garcia, Harris County Commissioner for Precinct 2, to accept this award. Thank you, Jeff. And I feel like I'm almost at the Oscars. And we have been nominated twice. Uh, so I am so, so excited because it's such a great honor uh, to be in this incredible company. 
uh, and to have our work recognized. So thank you to all. And the fact that it is two projects in one uh, occasion, that is, uh, it's just made my day, made my weekend. So thank you. But this is evidence uh, to the fact that my team works hard day in and day out, including weekends. And these two projects are a true testament uh, to their work. Thank you again to project manager Antonio Rosario for leading the team in the construction of this project and also to our parks director, Chris Sadler and his team on the ground who ensured that our park facilities are not only being maintained, but also looking for ways to take our parks to the next level. That's our goal uh, day in and day out. Also, thank you to the Harris County engineer, uh, John Blunt, including his design and construction teams uh, for helping us along the way to make sure that this park comes to beautiful life. Also want to thank uh, Tim May and Half Associates for their design work on this park. One goal uh, we had was preserving as much green space as possible because Atascacita is a rapidly uh, developing area. And so coming across beautiful green space is difficult. And so when we saw the green space, we, uh, and in particularly the two and a half acre pond we knew we had to preserve it. What better way to do that than to build a boardwalk that traverses it and really showcases the natural beauty of, uh, of the area and the space. The park features a gorgeous dog park, so bring your puppies, a large playground, playground area. Uh, don't tell the kids, but I had to test the playground equipment. It's okay, it's good to use, safe large picnic uh, pavilion and uh, and obviously restroom facilities. And please stop by any weekend, uh, regardless of the weather, but obviously on those uh, beautiful weekends, it will be a beautiful experience. The place is always well attended uh, because the folks there appreciate it so very much. And so we're so happy uh, with the addition of this facility to our parks uh, portfolio. Thank you to the contractors, uh, landscape architect, and portfolio builders for making the design come to life. And again, to HCAG, thank you for recognizing the value in these projects and recognizing the importance of highlighting them and signifying uh, the commitment that so many uh, communities across our region have to making sure that people have a place that they can enjoy that their children uh, can enjoy and experience and uh, making sure that green space, park facilities are a true uh, addition to everyone's quality of life. Again, I'm honored to have been in this incredible company and thank you to HCAC once again. Thank you, Commissioner and congratulations to you and your entire team. Next up, uh, we would like to offer a special recognition to the Greens Bayou project of the Houston Parks Board. And uh, I believe we have Beth White and Richard McNamara of the Houston Parks Board here to accept uh, on behalf of this project. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, it's really an honor to be part of this company and to be on a call with so many colleagues who have have worked in various ways on uh, biogreenways. This is a particularly special segment of uh, biogreenways along Greens Bio, and it connects to Hall's Biogreenway and Brock Park, a very special part of the city that is really quite natural and had previously been inaccessible to visitors. Um, as you know, this is a jewel in the Bio Greenways initiative, which is a 150 mile system of linear parks and trails along nine major bios. And what began as an urban parks program has really turned into a serious land conservation effort. And uh, in this area of the city in particular, uh, I'm really delighted to uh, thank Mary Kylers and Sheila Condon specifically for their great work on this uh, from Clark Condon. 
they really guided us through a deep understanding of the site, how it functions, how we needed to be very respectful of it in our treatment of this area, which is a little different from other parts of uh, bio greenways. As you know, we provide active transportation along with recreation, but here it really is an experience in uh, a wilderness area and uh, a delightful change of pace as we um, experience our environment in the fourth largest city in America. The design, the construction, and the protection of existing habitat will provide a model uh, for, for how we design access to these sensitive areas um, along, we have a natural surface trail system here, which again is a little bit of a departure for us on biogreenways. And it really addresses our desire to provide equitable access um, to areas in great need of park space. So uh, many thanks to the HGAC for this honor and also a thanks to the voters who approved a $100 million bond back in 2012 to provide uh, the public funding for this overall effort and the donors who contributed to the $124 million campaign. So um, everything uh, on this project just really goes back to protecting our environment and making it accessible for all Houstonians. So thank you very much for this honor. And I, a special shout out to Richard McNamara as a project manager for this effort and John Brandt who worked on this particular segment. So thank you once again. Thank you, Beth, and congratulations. Next up, we uh, would like to honor the heart of the zoo, Catherine G. McGovern Texas Wetlands exhibit. Henri is the Houston Zoo and uh, accepting is Aaron Donato who is the Houston Zoo's Sustainability Manager. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are so excited that the Texas Wetlands Exhibit is receiving this honor from the Houston Galveston Area Council. We are very proud of this project and how it helps us in our mission to connect communities with animals and inspire action to save wildlife. In 2017, we launched a 20 year master plan to reconfigure the Houston Zoo into experiential education zones that highlight ecosystems found in Texas and around the world. And our Texas Wetlands exhibit was the first to be completed. If you are a native Houstonian, you probably remember the duck pond that used to be located in the heart of our zoo. It was an old aging pond with poor water quality that lacked educational opportunities. Our new exhibit reinvents this area into a functional wetland and features three native Texas species that have been saved from the brink of extinction thanks to the Endangered Species Act. And that's the bald eagle, American alligator, and whooping crane. This exhibit is a prime example of how amenity ponds can be reimagined into working living habitats. Since reopening of the new exhibit, the area has seen a 75% increase in biodiversity with many volunteer animals stopping by in to visit the habitat, including belted kingfishers, yellow crowned night herons, hummingbirds, and the great horned owl. Another great feature of this exhibit is it was designed to function as stormwater detention. So during heavy rain events, the wetland exhibit can capture up to five inches of rainfall, allowing the exhibit to hold and slowly release water to braze bayou downstream. This helps reduce localized flooding and mimics the ecosystem services of natural wetlands, demonstrating why it is so important to protect our region's wetland ecosystems. We are so excited to share this habitat and the animals that depend on it with our more than 2 million annual visitors who come from all over the Houston Galveston area each year. So thank you very much for this honor and we hope you come and see us. Thank you, Erin and congratulations. Next up, we have a, recon a special recognition for the Catherine G. McGovern Canopy Walkway and Visitor Pavilion. The honoree is the Houston Audubon Society. And I'm pleased to uh, introduce Helen E. Drummond, the Houston Audubon Society Executive Director to accept this award. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's, it's good to be here. I'm Helen Drummond, uh, Executive Director of Houston Audubon. On behalf of all at Houston Audubon, I wanna thank HJC for honoring us uh, with this award. I also want to thank our architects, design and project management team at SWA, 
and Miller's Construction for creating an amazing experience through this project. I especially want to thank Catherine McGovern for funding this $2.4 million project. Houston Audubon um, advances the conservation of birds and other wildlife through habitat conservation, education, and science and research. We serve 11 counties surrounding Galveston Bay. The Catherine G. McGovern Canopy Walkway and the Visitor Pavilion are located in Galveston County uh, in Houston Audubon's Smith Oaks Bird Sanctuary, which is home to one of the most productive and most visited inland bird rookeries in the greater Houston area. This project, which was designed to provide an exciting, immersive outdoor nature experience, was conceived as part of a larger master planning effort to enhance stewardship and conservation of critical bird habitat and to expand and enhance outdoor recreation opportunities on the Bolivar Peninsula and in High Island. So the McGovern Canopy Walk it, it creates a destination experience for area residents throughout the Houston Galveston area and the international bird watching community. The elevated boardwalk is 700 feet long and it meanders through tree canopy, leading visitors to two freshwater ponds where they can get an up close bird's eye view of egrets and herons and roseate spoonbills as they build their nests and feed their young. Glimpses of the alligators that help keep predators away from the birds are also part of this viewing treat for children and adults. In addition, the boardwalk slowly reaches a peak elevation of 17 feet as it meanders through the tree canopy, um, giving visitors an opportunity for eye level views of the neotropical migrants who stop in High Island to temporarily rest during their arduous cross continental journey in the spring. This design will offer birders and non-birders alike rewarding encounters with nature. Also um, added for enhanced visitor experience is a new shade pavilion and restroom. The pavilion is, it's uniquely high island. Um, it's a, a 1930s era brick pump house uh, left over from the time of, of oil and sulfur extraction was repurposed to provide ample shade and cover for visitors to, to rest and retreat, you know, while they're at the sanctuary um, and walking around. The pavilion provides an entry point to, to the canopy walk. We're really excited about uh, these new amenities and the improvements um, and are just thrilled um, how it all turned out. It's just really a fantastic project and we invite you all to visit, especially during the spring. Thank you, Helen, and congratulations. Next up, we would like to recognize the Timber Lane Utility District's Community Center. And the honoree is the Timber Lane Utility District. And uh, accepting on their behalf is Mr. Bud Gessel, who is the General Manager and Parks Director uh, at Timber Lane Utility District. Bud? Hello. Hello, bud. Hello. There we, we go. We can hear you. Okay. I'm here at the new community center. You can kind of see part of it in the background there. Uh, this is the lobby part, but I'd like to recognize the Timberlane Board of Directors for all their effort in getting the building built. Uh, and Clark Condon and Shepley Bullfinch were the architect and landscape architect and uh, Vogler Spencer was the engineer. But it's a 7,500 square foot facility that has a nature center lobby. And then we have a meeting room that'll seat about 300 people as we uh, walk into the meeting area. And then on the other end of the building is our park constable patrol uh, 
where we run our park uh, park patrol from. But we're glad to accept this award and hope to apply for some more in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Bud, and congratulations. And thanks you for giving us a, a whirlwind tour of a great looking facility. Our, our final Henri uh, in this category is for Willow Fork Park and the Henri is the Willow Fork Drainage District and I would like to call on uh, Ryan Welch with TBG Partners to accept the award on behalf of the Willow Fork Drainage District. Mr. Welch, you're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I'll first start off the fact that uh, we, we appreciate the fact that Willow Fork Drainage District the fact that we can have these incredible projects that we work on in Sinka Ranch and Katy area. Um, but the, the Willow Fork drain, uh, the Willow Fork Park, um, it's an amazing project that we worked on. TBG appreciates the award. Um, but it, it really, the fact that it, it was a flat piece of land that was disconnected. Um, and what we wanted to design was a connection to the community and to, really everything else, like the, the fact the 99 is coming down there, um, just really that environment that you're looking through there and seeing this. Um, so just designing um, a bridge access to, um, a pedestrian bridge access to the Willow Fork area. Um, and then having basically the fact that it was a flat land, we can dig this out and then create these kind of passive mounds that are happening and it's really kind of a beautiful area um i live right down the road from this so it's really cool to see all the activity that's happening um but really we have solar panel lighting um we have a bunch of lakes uh just the a disc golf area um and then basically having this uh a, a good uh i guess shade structure, um, a venue center that has bathroom areas and then having um, a playground area. But I would like to thank um, the civil AECOM, uh, which is civil that worked with us because having to deal with all this grading environment, it's, it's tough. But what it came out with was it's beautiful. It looks really, really well. Um, Kirby Terrell, which was architect and the MEP, which is CFI um, companies irrigation, uh, Missouan consultants, and then the contractor, which was uh, Millis Development. Um, but really just the idea of having this really passive space that really creates a good environment for the, the whole community. And then they, they have this kind of area that they can enjoy that was really in, in general was cut off, but now we connected it all. Um, and it's, it's been very active and uh, I'm very proud to um, accept this honor. And I think this park is really, it's really beautiful. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of it as TBG and everyone. And thank you. Excellent. Well, congratulations, Ryan, to you and your team. We are now going to transition into our final award category, and that is for projects on the ground, uh, which were under $500,000. And our overall winner for this category is the Butterfly Pocket Park. The honoree is the Greater Northside Management District, and accepting on their behalf is Ms. Rebecca Reña, who is the Greater Northside Management District's Executive Director. Rebecca? I need to unmute. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. I, I we are so honored, and I want to accept this on behalf of the Greater Northside Management District Board of Directors, staff, and myself. We want to thank the Houston Galveston Area Council for this award and honor. It is especially meaningful that this is our first, but definitely not our last, such 
um, such project. The Butterfly Pocket Park is a true community collaboration. Those slots started with cleanups in the early 2000s um, when a concerned neighbor and leader of the North Central Civic Association, Eddie Coranco, called then council member Adrian Garcia with concerns about the students that would have to walk by this overgrown lot that was a hiding place for criminal activity. Of course, as we know, our then council member Adrian Garcia is now our commissioner um, of the area. Many neighborhood cleanups and years later, a conversation between the district, Jennifer Wagley with Avenue CDC, our community nonprofit, and artist Rose Toro about a community garden grew into the Butterfly Pocket Park. With Rose's vision of the monarch butterfly as the center and inspiration, the park includes an art enhancement that educates visitors about the life cycle of the monarch butterflies, trees and plants that attract monarch butterflies on their annual mig migration to Mexico for the winter. It is a place for residents and other visitors to enjoy. As I said, it's a true collaboration and there are many people to thank. First and foremost, the city of Houston, Park and Recreations Department, specifically Lisa Johnson and Lucy Correa and our district age council member, Carla Cisneros, who worked with us to ensure that this became a reality. Open Architecture of Houston, a wonderful nonprofit of design professionals who helped with communities design charrettes. Specifically, TVG Partners Schematic Designs, who put in weekend and evening volunteer hours working on design concepts with the community. Kananuda Asakura Robinson, our consultant, Peter Caldwell, and Custom Scape Landscape, Custom Scapes, who brought to life the Pocket Park and implemented all the inspiration and ideas from the Northside community. Our project would not have happened without the encouragement and fortitude and funding of Avenue especially board member Mary Lawler, City of Houston Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs, Complete Communities, the Houston Arts Alliance, Houston Wilderness Fund, and River Oaks Garden Association. We also want to thank for their support our Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia and our State Senator Carol Alvarado and their staff for always supporting the district and community. Rose, who's on this call from Rose Artworks and Hermes Amaya from Custom Scapes, who believed in this project so much um, in our community that they in the end actually donated supplies to make sure we had a complete and beautiful pocket park. Also want to thank um, a thank you to our former staff Jorge Bustamante and our current deputy director Annabeth Torcios for making this project su a success and Gina Magana and Ginger Bertrand who work hard on our ongoing success of the park. Last and most importantly we want to thank and recognize our community, our business, our residents who every day fight for a better neighborhood. We hope that you will visit our Fulton Pocket Park soon. Thank you again for this award. Thank you and congratulations, Rebecca, to you and your team and all your project partners. Our final honoree of the Parks and Natural Areas Awards program is for Trailside Park. West Chase District, who receives our honorable mention for a project on the ground under $500,000. And uh, pleased to welcome back to the virtual podium, uh, Ms. Kelly Aylesworth, West Chase Management District Maintenance Director. Thank you. Good morning again to all. Um, it's my pleasure and honor to accept this award on behalf of the West Chase District. Uh, we have so many to thank. Uh, in no particular order, uh, Asakura Robinson, Capstar, Andy Lay, Centerpoint, uh, Rebecca Dye, Route 5 Landscaping, um, Kaboom, America Walks Grant, as well as Reginald Adams. Uh, the projects, Vice President Projects is Irma Sanchez and Projects Director, Louis Julien. Uh, the Trailside Park is a half acre park located just north of Richmond Avenue. It connects to a 750 foot trail uh, that runs along the Harris, the HCC campus trail uh, and runs into Hayes Road. Uh, the park features a zip crew zip line. It's 30 feet long uh, and it runs smoothly so that kids can, can move back and forth along the zip line safely. Uh, it also, the park also features a lion mosaic and a leopard in the trees. Uh, one of the fun 
One of the fun features that kids love to enjoy is the hopscotch that's um, over in the corner just north of the park. Uh, our goals in mind for this project were uh, to uh, just community, um, to go out, enjoy the park, um, increase overall health and fitness, um, and uh, for the kids to have a, a nice place to play. So we hope and we hope that all of you will come out and uh, ride on the zipline cruise and uh, come out and see our park. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations again, Kelly. This concludes our Parks and Natural Areas Awards presentation. Uh, I just wanna say, wow. Uh, looking at the diversity of projects, uh, you know, starting with canoes and uh, community centers, wonderful art, uh, amazing habitat, uh, bikeways, trails, uh, uh, integrating flood management, uh, so much. We, we have so much to be proud of in this region. You know, when I talk to my peers in other parts of the country, uh, sometimes when you talk about Houston, you know, the first thing people think of is not necessarily green. And I come back, well, you ought to come here and spend a little bit of time because I would put our parks and natural areas on a par with any I've seen anywhere. And it's because of the great work that you all are doing. I want to just give you a, a heads up on a couple things uh, with our parks and natural areas program. First off, we have created an online gallery of all of our winners since 2006. And uh, I think Andrea Tantillo is uh, sending out a link to that. So you can look at each year's award program. You can see a map on where those projects are and you will get a nice photograph and a little thumbnail description of what the project is. And I would encourage all of you to uh, take the time if you haven't been to some of these places before uh, to go out and visit them and tell your friends. And, um, you know, we, we really, uh, I think, have a, a big, like Judge Spenrath said at the beginning, we, we've got a big opportunity to market this region as, as a quality of life capital uh, in our nation. And uh, the work you all are doing is, is uh, taking us there in, in very amazing and inspiring ways. I'd also like to announce that the next meeting of the Parks and Natural Areas Roundtable, which Glenn Laird chairs, will be Monday, March 8th. And uh, this is really an open group uh, where we want parks um, enthusiasts from all over the region to participate. And uh, we, as Glenn mentioned, have, have really been picking up some steam on this group. So uh, please let Andrea Tantillo know uh, if you would like to be um, informed of uh, natural Parks and Natural Areas Roundtable meetings, and more specifically, uh, if you uh, got an idea here about a project uh, your community might like to submit for next year's award program, uh, Andrea will keep you posted uh, on when those deadlines will be and what the application procedures are. And so at this point, we are going to transition into the uh, Water Innovation Strategies of Excellence awards part of the program, but uh, I would encourage all the, the parks uh, enthusiasts to stick around for that because I have a, a fun little announcement at the end uh, that I think you will all be interested in. So the Water Innovation Strategies of Excellence or WISE Awards uh, is another program that was uh, initiated with our Natural Resources Advisory Committee which uh, the board of directors uh, nominates and, and advises them on a variety of, of natural resource issues. This was really uh, not so much to just focus on green, but to focus on projects that specifically had an impact on our region's water quality. And uh, this is a much newer program than the Parks Awards, uh, but we thought we would take this opportunity, particularly uh, since we're not doing in-person award ceremonies to, uh, to present these award winners at a very uh, related type of program with parks and natural areas. So it is our hope that these projects will serve as a model of uh, success 
for others on uh, how we can better uh, better improve our water quality through a variety of different types of projects. And I would like to acknowledge the judges for this program. And those would be uh, Richard Chapin with the city of Houston, who is also the chair of the HJC Natural Resources Advisory Committee. Uh, Kelly Gallagher with the Port of Houston, Michael Thornhill with SI Environmental, and Jin Ye from the City of Houston Public Works Department. So thank you very much for your, uh, your participation and work in uh, evaluating our applicants. And I would now like to present the uh, winners of this year's WISE Awards. The first one is in the planning and policy category. It is for the Gulf Coast Houston Regional Conservation Plan, specifically the second key goal that is outlined in that plan. The honoree is Houston Wilderness and the acceptor is going to be Ms. Deborah January Beavers, who is the Executive Director of Houston Wilderness. Deborah. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I sure appreciate and, and all the Houston Wilderness staff and supporters of of this effort, uh, very much appreciate this recognition today. Among the many benefits of the eight county Gulf Houston Regional Conservation Plan or RCP as we call it, the three key goals, an exciting aspect of the RCP is that every single one of the projects you heard about today fit into one of those three goals. Uh, and and that's, that's exciting. I mean, that's the kind of activity uh, and, and uh, implementation that we're seeing taking place in all of our three uh, key areas. Houston Wilderness does indeed facilitate the implementation and data collection of the RCP, but really it's the collaborative steering committee and other many partners involved in the implementation of these three key goals who collectively created what has turned out to be a, a, a really uh, a substantial uh, indication of what long-term areas we need to target that will be most beneficial to the environmental needs of our region. And I do want to shout out that there's quite a few folks on the call today attending who are a member of the or have been a member of the steering committee. So thank you for uh, being there. And, and I want to make it clear that this is a big effort. Houston Wilderness is just excited to be able to implement and facilitate the data collection. The second key goal itself, which is recognized today, uh, enhances millions of acres across the eight county region on private and public lands with nature-based stabilization techniques, also known as green stormwater infrastructure, large-scale tree planting, uh, bioswales, many different uh, types of techniques go into that category uh, that will improve multiple ecosystem services. So yes, as Jeff mentioned, certainly water quality, uh, as well as flood control and erosion control, but also air uh, air quality enhancement, reduction of the urban heat island effect, increased wildlife habitat, outdoor recreation, which you've heard a lot about today, et cetera. So all those ecosystem services we recognize are important. Carbon sequestration is another one that's a growing effort uh, and interest in our region. So every year we use land, land use changes, every year we see, excuse me, land use changes that are uh, head, are, that are targeted toward these nature-based enhancement needs. And every year then we're seeing that we're getting closer and closer to that 50% of nature-based stabilization techniques in the region by 2040. So thank you again very much. And thanks to everybody who's been involved in this effort. And there's lots more you can see on our website. Thank you, Deborah, and congratulations. The next thank word you. category is for education and outreach. The honoree is the Imagine a Day Without Water campaign by the City of Houston Public Works Department. And uh, accepting on behalf of the City Public Works is Paula Pashorek, who is the Water Programs and Education Manager for Houston Water. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, Thank you so much for this award recognition. It's very meaningful to us um, as we're always doing and doing and it's, it's great. It's a great opportunity to stop and enjoy the fruits of our, our work. And I work to do that. They, they give us that boost to continue doing what we do 
and strive at getting better. So I really appreciate what you do at HAC and all the juries and all the work that you've put into this. So a little bit of background on this event. In 2019, Houston Public Works joined the US Water Alliance and hundreds of water utilities across the nation to celebrate the value of water campaign, which is Imagine a Day Without Water. The campaign's purpose is to encourage the general public as well as public officials to recognize the essential role water plays in our daily lives. On this day, the community is asked to reflect the value of water through different initiatives and activities. Imagine a Day Without Water traditional takes place on the third Thursday in October. And in 2019, we celebrated the first year by bringing together diverse stakeholders to highlight how water is essential, uh, invaluable, and in need of investment. And activities included special events, a proclamation, a pledge to conserve water, and an essay contest for students and social media engagement. Of highlight during this event was our school essay context, which we hosted for public, private, and homeschool students first through eight grades. The essay called for students to describe what would happen if water would stop flowing in Houston. We had over 200 submissions and the winners were recognized at Houston's October City Council public meeting. And I just wanna say that this moment was really emotional and invaluable. You could see the parents getting emotional for their kids being recognized and also for being engaged in such meaningful activities. So it was really, really, um, a strong moment for us, like very, very meaningful. So thank you again for this uh, award. And um, we're, again, uh, thank you for the, the opportunity. And we're still, we'll, we'll, we'll continue with this event uh, in, in the next years as well. Thank you, Paula, and congratulations. Next up is a special recognition for exemplary environmental advocacy by a citizens group. The project is addressing the bacteria impairment of the tidal San Bernard River. And the honoree is the Friends of the San Bernard River. And accepting on their behalf is Mr. Justin Hillis, who is Friends of the River Environmental Committee Chairman. Justin. Thank you very much for this award. The Friends of the San Bernard River are uh, very proud to be recognized for all the, the work that uh, many people have contributed in uh, helping for uh, San Bernard River achieve this award. This uh, program was started back in 2009 with the development of the San Bernard uh, River water protection uh, plan. In that process, the bacterial impairment was identified as the biggest issue. Uh, Friends of the River San Bernard took the recommendations from the water protection plan to uh, address the bacterial impairment and, de and developed a uh, plan of action that uh, could be taken to the community. Uh, this plan centered around water quality monitoring and through education of the, of the public in the, of the, in the watershed about uh, sources of the bacterial contamination. Uh, this plan has led to uh, for creating a uh, greater awareness within the community of the ac actions that they can take to uh, contribute to uh, achieving a reduction in the bacterial impairment of the San Bernard River. Um, I wanna give a special thanks to uh, two gentlemen that spent a lot of their time uh, helping contribute to this cause by uh, taking countless water samples every month and then uh, taking them to uh, Clear Lake to have them tested. Uh, Tim Logan and Valroy Modlin uh, or uh, put a lot of effort into helping us achieve this award as well. We also would like to uh, thank the uh, Galveston Bay Foundation for helping with uh, teaching our water monitors and uh, in the proper techniques for sampling. And uh, so we're very uh, proud to be recognized 
for this achievement and uh, we conti will continue to uh, press forward and help educate the public on what can be done to help address this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin, and congratulations. Our, our final recognition today is for exemplary uh, STEM education engagement of K through 12 students. The honoree is the Houston Public Works uh, 2019 Waterworks Festival. And uh, once again, accepting on behalf of Houston Public Works will be uh, Paula Pashorek. Thank you very much again for this recognition. Uh, since I have a little bit of time now, I'm for a second time going, uh, I would like to thank my team members who are in the in the trench lines uh, for, uh, you know, behind these events who are doing all the work, uh, which are Ryan, Ryan Prillman, Gail Kaufman, and Sarah Gossett Robinson. So, so thank you to them and these awards go, go to them. Um, so uh, just a little bit of background on the World Works Festival is our signature annual event. Uh, we have hosted this event for over 26 years, bringing together Houston's finest, both public and private water industries for one day of comprehensive, immersive water education. The event focuses on all aspects of urban, uh, of urban water cycle, including topics such as water conservation, treatment, reuse, and recycling. The event is free of charge and primarily attracts Houston Independent Schools District, third grade, third to fifth grade students, their teachers and their parents. Over the last 26 years, the event has welcomed more than 30,000 participants. And this festival provides a unique opportunity for school children to experience firsthand the importance for, for one of the Earth's most, most valuable resources, which is water. And um, while the 2020 festival was postponed due to the impacts of the coronavirus, Houston Public Works will resume this event as public health and safety allows. So thank you again for this opportunity and recognition. Thank you, Paula, and again, congratulations. Uh, this concludes our uh, Wise Awards presentation, but I want to note that uh, if you're interested in submitting uh, your project for consideration in the 2021 Wise Awards category, uh, please contact Kathy Jansen on my staff and her email is listed below and I think also in the chat. So if you wanna get on the mailing list for the parks application, uh, contact Andrea. If you wanna go with the WISE, uh, contact Kathy. And, and please help spread the word, uh, particularly with the WISE Awards is a newer program. And uh, we think these are just such great honorees this year. We would like to, uh, to uh, get the word out on them and uh, help uh, bring others into the program. I'll, I'll just give a little pitch on, on both. Um, we don't believe these, unlike some awards programs, the, the applications are not onerous. And uh, we, we've tried to make them very accessible to uh, communities and projects of all sizes. So uh, please consider if you haven't before participated in one of these uh, submitting a project and we would love to hear from you. And now for my second favorite part of the day, uh, other than uh, just seeing you all and seeing these wonderful projects, I would like to uh, talk about our digital badges. I think I have gotten off of my script here, Andrea, for the first time today, it was inevitable. So uh, we have the badges above uh, each of these uh, notations that are available for you to post on your website and other materials as a Parks and Natural Awards or WISE Awards winner. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, getting these or utilizing them, uh, please contact, contact Andrea or Kathy. And uh, I wanna also note that uh, previous honorees, if, if you didn't, uh, didn't pick yours up last year or even back to 2006 when we didn't have them, uh, you're, you're welcome to use them too. Andrea, uh, I will trust you to cut in if I did not um, say all of that correctly. 
but assuming I did, I would just like to say in closing, uh, thank you again, Judge Spinrath, for kicking us off on a great note. Uh, thank you for all the presenters uh, and, and all the work you've done that we honored today. And uh, I would like to briefly thank uh, my staff who helped make this uh, event possible. And uh, those include Sarah Torreson, Wendy Almanzen, uh, Cheryl Murgo, Kathy Johnson, and last but certainly not least is Andrea Tantillo, who is our Zoom master and uh, keeps the trains running on time and uh, helps these events uh, hopefully be as pleasurable an experience for you as it has been for me today. So we are going to uh, conclude the official part of the ceremony. And uh, I unfortunately am going to have to leave you all now but uh, we are gonna keep the room open and uh, encourage you to continue uh, uh, chatting and uh, visiting. We don't have any food for you today, but uh, I encourage you to take an opportunity to network and uh, introduce yourself to people who have a project you'd be interested in learning more about. And, and let's keep this dialogue going. Uh, we're doing great things and we have a lot to learn from each other. So thank you all very much and uh, we'll see you next year. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Glenn. Bye, Andrea. Thank you. Bye, Bye Carl. Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. I am so glad to see these programs have uh, moved along as well as they have, particularly parks and natural areas. Way to go, guys. I think these are probably everyone's favorite programs. I mean, who doesn't like parks and natural areas, right? Well, there are some. Believe me, there's still some developers out there that need educating. Well, we'll invite everybody, hopefully, um, the Butterfly Park apart. We actually have not had our official ribbon cutting because we oh, finished wow. this in the middle of COVID. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So we'll have, we'll make sure we'll send out a, an invite to everybody when we actually have the official ribbon cutting. Well, that sounds nice. Thank y'all, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. So okay. This so um, I, it's been great. And let's uh, keep it up. All right. I love it. <laughs>
it seems like most everybody's kind of winding down. Just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the Wise Awards judges, winners, special recognition honorees, and staff. We were so pleased to piggyback with you guys on uh, today's award ceremony, and congratulations to all the awards winners. Other than that, I think we're probably ready to wrap up. Alrighty, and thank you for being a part of today. So it was, it was a really good synergy and I'm so glad everybody got to participate and I will piggyback on you to congratulate everyone. And <laughs> I think with that, I'm just going to close this room and that's going to um, put us all out of here. Thank you for coming and sharing your Friday with us and we will see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>